okay so we discussed uh, alpha decay the key points i can summarize once again all nuclei with uh, mass number capital a greater than certain value somewhere around say 150 or so they are energetically they can decay through this alpha decay thing because that uh, product nuclei the daughter nucleus and alpha particle rest mass energy of that is lower than the rest mass energy of the parent once this capital a is more than 150 or so so energetically it is favorable but then uh, there are many stable nuclei or very nearly stable nuclei uh, beyond 150 and we saw that uh, the key feature is that alpha particle forms inside this bigger nucleus of course that pre formation probability is also there not that all heavy nuclei all already have alpha particle all the theory developed by gamma assumed something like that that pre formation is also something which will depend on the nucleus but it's a, an overall lowering of uh, this uh, total probability of decay as far as the variations are concerned it doesn't have much effect and this alpha particle when it tries to come out of the nucleus it uh, encounters the coulomb potential barrier so that's the key feature that's the central feature this alpha particle when it tries to come out it encounters this uh, coulomb barrier the barrier height is around say 25 mev or so and the energy of the alpha particle which one can uh, obtain experimentally once it comes out that energy is somewhere around say 4 to 9 mev we that is the q value and this is that barrier and this barrier tunneling probability which is a purely quantum mechanic effect is so almost solely responsible for this uh, alpha decay and this probability is very very sensitive with this q value if q value is raised slightly the width of the barrier to be crossed reduces considerably and the probability enhances so about 1 mega electron volt raise in this q value will lead to 100000 times greater probability of this uh, channeling so that explains how the variation of q from say 4 mev to 9 mev leads to some 25 orders of magnitude variation in the lifetime from uh, say giga years to microseconds or so we also saw that uh, for even even nuclei the ground state of the parent is zero plus and the ground state of the daughter is also zero plus and so the alpha decay when it takes place from ground state to ground state that alpha is l equal to zero angular momentum of that alpha particle is l equal to zero but uh, if it decays to uh, higher states then you have l which is more than this will correspond to l equal to 0 this will correspond to l equal to 2 and so on so if a uh, alpha particle comes out with a non zero angular momentum then this potential barriers is uh, uh, raised because of that centrifugal term l l plus 1 h cross square by 2 mr square so that will reduce the probability of tunneling and that will increase the lifetime so the branching uh, what is the probability of going to ground state and what is the probability going to the excited states that probability will be guided by this barrier paneling tunneling probability with raised potential because of this uh, angular momentum the alpha particle when it forms normally these uh, paired neutron and paired proton take part in formation of this alpha 
particle and therefore, for odd a nuclei uh, it will be slightly uh, energy uh, less energy efficient because when pairs are combined to form alpha particle that last unpaired nucleon that is left in uh, uh, in higher energy state. So, total q value uh, available decreases for the x this daughter nucleus will have that raised energy because of that uh, unpaired nucleon. So, that probability is less. So, all these things uh, we discussed if you the parity should also be conserved. So, 0 plus 2 2 plus is all right because plus 2 plus parity change and L equal to 2 is positive parity. So, that is perfectly all right, but suppose you have some state where this is j i and this is j f daughter is j f daughter state where it is decaying is j f and the parent state from where it is coming is j i then the L which has to come that must be between this j i minus j f to j i plus j f and uh, it has to also conserve the parity in strong interactions the parity is is conserved. So, this has to be satisfied as well as parity has to be satisfied. So, for example, if you have say from 0 plus you are looking at transition to 2 minus suppose this this daughter has a state 2 minus and the uh, parent is in 0 plus and you are looking for this transition of alpha particle that will be uh, forbidden because 0 to 2 if you use this inequality this L must be 2 and if L is equal to 2 and this parity is plus here and parity is minus here. So, that is not possible 1 minus 1 to the power 2 is plus. So, this is this transition is forbidden absolutely forbidden. So, these are some of the things that uh, are interesting in alpha decay. So, now I move on to the next type of uh, decay radioactive decay that is beta decay. Okay, so, the basics of beta decay uh, you, you know from your school days and also we have discussed uh, a lot in the beginning about the basic processes which leads to this beta decay. So, once again that stability z n curve you can bring in your mind and there are some specific specific combinations of uh, neutron number n and proton number z for which you have those uh, stable dots black dots in that z n diagram and if you create a nucleus or a nucleus is created somehow with a neutron number slightly more than that, then it is possible that one neutron of that nucleus uh, converts itself into a proton giving an electron. So, in that case this x a z. So, if a neutron is converted into proton, the proton number is increased by 1 and if a neutron converts into proton it also creates an electron and a particle called anti neutrino plus energy. So, that is one type of decay which we call beta minus decay. Another possibility is uh, if proton number is more than what is required for the stability then one proton of that nucleus can decay can convert itself into a neutron in that case a x z will become y z minus 1 a. And if that happens if a proton converts into neutron then you have e plus positron and this neutrino this is known as beta plus decay. And then the nucleus uh, in any real uh, experiment or phenomena nucleus is part of the atom and you have atomic electrons. So, neutron this nucleus can capture one of these electron uh, electrons from the orbits in that case this a z x will take up 
an electron and that will make z minus 1 a and plus neutrino this is known as electron capture. Both of uh, these will occur if you have more protons than what is required for stability. So, one proton is trying to convert itself into neutron. So, here proton is converting into neutron emitting or creating a positron. Here proton is converting into neutron by combining with this uh, already existing electron. So, these are the processes. So, most of the time when proton number is more than what is required both these channels are open and depending on the situation certain probability for this type of decay and certain probability for this type of decay. Now, let us take the q values. So, for this equation beta minus decay take this beta minus decay first right beta minus decay for this how do I get the q values from the known masses the q value will be mass of the uh, initial parent nucleus here that is mass of a x z let me write it n here this n is for nuclear mass we are talking of not atomic mass nuclear mass. So, q value of uh, this reaction is mass of this parent and minus mass of the product. So, minus mass of nuclear mass of this a y z plus 1 and then minus mass of this electron and minus mass of neutrino times c square. A neutrino mass is something very very interesting and uh, lots of uh, recent experiments have uh, enhanced our knowledge about neutrino mass. We will talk about that later uh, in somewhat more detail, but for the time being this neutrino mass is going to be extremely small this m nu c square will be say hardly few tens of electron volts. This is rest mass energy of electron 511 kilo electron volts which is 0.511 mega electron volts and this is only uh, some 10 electron volt or uh, 20 electron volts or 7 electron volts like that. So, we will just neglect this part. Now, if I write in terms of the atomic masses because atomic masses are which are uh, readily available which are measured which are tabulated we can get the values of those atomic masses very uh, from those tables. So, convert it into atomic masses this will be uh, once again forgetting that atomic binding energy this will be atomic mass if nothing is written it is atomic. So, a x z and minus z times mass of electron right this is nucleus and this is atom. So, atom is nucleus plus electrons there are z electrons. So, z times mass of electrons that if I subtract from the atomic mass I get this uh, nuclear mass uh, neglecting the atomic binding energies which are again uh, few electron volts. Then here it is uh, minus so this is one part and then minus here it is other part mass atomic mass of a y z plus 1 and minus z plus 1 times mass of electron and then this is mass of electron and I neglect this mass of neutrino c square. Okay. So, now we can look at this electron masses you have minus z m e here and minus m e here. So, that makes it minus z plus 1 m e and here you have plus z plus 1 m e. So, all these electron masses will cancel out and you have only the difference between this parent nucleus mass atom 
atomic mass uh, and then minus m a y z plus 1. Now, it is the atomic masses that we are talking of times c square. So, to calculate that uh, q value in a beta minus decay scheme, you only have to look at the atomic mass of the parent and atomic mass of the daughter and subtract to get this q value. Now, the second equation beta plus decay, we can do a similar analysis q value of so equation 2, which is beta plus decay. So, q value will be similarly nuclear mass of this parent A x z minus nuclear mass of the product. So, uh, mass of the rest mass of the product. So, m of this A y z minus 1. So, that is it minus mass of positron which is same as mass of electron and neutrino mass we neglect. So, this into c square and if I convert it into atomic masses this will be atomic mass of this A x z and minus z times m e. So, this is this one then minus this one will be atomic mass A y z minus 1 and minus z minus 1 times m e. So, it is this one and then minus m e c square. Now, look at the electron masses you have minus z coming from here and uh, plus z minus 1 coming from here. So, this plus z minus 1 and minus z will be minus m e this term and this term is minus m e and here also you have another minus m e. So, it is twice electron mass. So, that uh, electron mass has to be carefully seen so, and the rest is difference between the parent and daughter atomic masses. So, it is m times a x z and minus m times a y z minus 1. So, this is parent atomic mass minus daughter atomic mass. In case of beta minus decay, we just had, had to stop here and into c square, but for beta plus you have 2 times m e c square. So, be careful if you have to calculate the q value of this beta decay the expressions are different for beta minus decay and beta plus decay. In beta minus decay you only look at the atomic masses of the parent and daughter and subtract, but for beta plus decay you also have to subtract this double of electron mass and it is quite significant because uh, the beta decay q values are again typically in uh, mega electron few mega electron volt range 1 m 1 MeV, 2 MeV, uh, 3 MeV type and twice of m e c square will be more than 1 mega electron volt. So, it is quite sizable this q value and for electron capture if you do similar thing third equation electron capture. So, here the q value will be mass of the initial uh, constituents. So, it is nuclear mass of A x z and plus m e that is the mass of this part left hand side and minus the rest mass of the uh, product side. So, it is minus nuclear mass of A y z minus 1 neglect neutrino mass this into c square. Convert to atomic masses it will be 
atomic mass a x z and minus z times m e that is this part then plus m e and then minus atomic mass a y z minus 1 and minus z minus 1 m e times c square. One more bracket somewhere. So, now if I look at the electron masses, I have minus z and plus 1 from here and here this minus and this minus product is 1. So, z minus 1 m e. So, z minus 1 m e from here and negative of that minus z plus 1 m e here. So, they will all cancel out and you will only have difference between the atomic masses of parent and daughter. So, if we compare these two same nucleus can decay through beta plus and electron capture because uh, in both of these cases proton is converting into neutron, but then the q value of electron capture will be larger uh, by this 2 times m e c square than the q value of this uh, beta plus. So, you can find in many cases that this electron capture is energetically possible, but beta plus is not because q becomes negative there in electron capture it is uh, q is positive. So, those nuclei will only go through electron capture and not through beta plus. So, these are the energy considerations. Now, the most interesting observation about this uh, beta decay process which puzzled physicists for two decades or so is the energy distribution of these beta particles. So, if I consider some uh, uh, beta decay, uh, then q values we have calculated. So, this q is the available energy and this available energy, this extra energy reduction in the rest mass energy this appears as the kinetic energy of the products as usual. And here the products are the daughter nucleus, the beta particle itself and the neutrino. Now, this neutrino and anti neutrino uh, when I say neutrino here, uh, it could be anti neutrino, it could be neutrino. We will talk more about neutrinos separately as I said. So, consider for example, beta minus decay. So, you have this daughter nucleus and electron and anti neutrino. These three particles share this energy. Now, this daughter nucleus require that uh, energy take up due to this is very, very small because that daughter nucleus is much heavier, uh, mass is very high as compared to the mass of electron or mass of uh, neutrino. So, that uh, that part you can uh, safely uh, approximate uh, to, to 0 and neglect that. So, this is now shared by electron and this anti neutrino. Now, how in what proportion it should be shared? For that uh, you need to go into quantum mechanics and we will be doing that uh, right in this lecture itself, but uh, during 1911 uh, uh, when this beta spectrum was measured by some physicist and in 20s or so that time this neutrino thing was absolutely not known. So, experimentally what people observed was only these electrons not these neutrinos or anti neutrinos and these electron kinetic energies were measured and it was found that uh, this kinetic energy uh, has a distribution. 
So, if I do not know about neutrino anti neutrino, what I will expect is that q value is almost entirely taken up by the electron and therefore, electron kinetic energy should be a very definite should have very definite value uh, depending on the decay scheme the rest mass of uh, uh, parent rest mass of uh, daughter and so on. And if the daughter nucleus is not in ground state it is in excited state then the q values will be different the kinetic energies will be different, but then they will take some discrete values as we saw in alpha particle alpha decay. But the experimental result which I am uh, trying to show you qualitatively this is from uh, 64 copper. Now, 64 copper is uh, uh, a very interesting nucleus. So, it can go through positrons emission uh, and it can also go through electron emission. So, here is a uh, energy spectrum what do I mean? This is the kinetic measured kinetic energy of uh, electron. So, uh, and this is the number of electrons. Okay. So, it is uh, decaying to uh, 64 zinc and plus beta minus and plus of course, in neutrino. So, this these electrons these beta particles which are measured in nuclear detectors energies are measured. So, one can count that at this energy take a very small interval whatever is allowed by that detection system in that uh, channel in that energy range d e at this e how many beta particles are detected in a given time. And in the same time how many al these beta particles are detected in some other uh, d e centered at some other e. So, that is how this distribution is plotted number of electrons as a function of uh, energy and that turns out to be of this type. I am just trying to reproduce this as nicely as possible. So, this is the scale in uh, MEVs and this side the points are are going like this somewhere here, 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 here like this and then decaying the last value is somewhere here. So, these are the kinds of points obtained in the experiment right. The experiment is uh, in physical review 76 1949 1725 and for this beta plus decay when where it goes to 64 nickel and neutrino here also one can measure the energy in MeV and this side is number of these positrons and here once again you have that scale. So, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.6 scale energy this is the kinetic energy of the these beta particles in mega electron volts and this side you have these numbers and here it goes like uh, uh, so it is somewhere maximizes here and then on this side it falls and it, it goes up to here. So, something of this sort. Okay. So, if you do not know about neutrino and uh, try to understand what should be the kinetic energy of this beta plus or beta minus from these decays. You only have to calculate the rest mass energy of this parent and daughter and perhaps if it is positron if it is beta plus decay minus twice of the electron energy and you can calculate this should be the q value. 
and neglecting the kinetic energy taken by the recoil of the daughter nucleus, this whole thing should come with this beta particle and you should have almost mono energetic type of uh, spectrum or if there are excited states may be a discrete spectrum. So, this kind of continuous distribution in energy or in momentum was a great puzzle at that time and uh, uh, where is the missing energy. If, if electron is coming with energy much is, is less than capital Q, many of the electrons are doing that or many of the positrons are doing that, where is that missing energy and similarly momentum and similarly ang angular momentum and so on. So, this was a big puzzle at that time when finally, Pauli suggested that perhaps there is a third particle, a neutral very light small particle which is coming out together with this beta which is sharing the energy and uh, later on that uh, uh, particle was named by Fermi as neutrino and experimentalists uh, finally, searched that neutrino. So, that is fine the neutrino is taking the remaining energy if the q value is this final point here is, uh, is related to uh, the q value that we calculate. So, if the electron is coming out with smaller energy less energy than the q value then rest of it is being taken by the neutrino. So, qualitatively the existence of this third particle uh, can tell how this distri the distribution is coming, but then the shape the functional form how much energy will neutrino take and how much energy will this beta particle take, what are different probabilities for different uh, compositions, different proportions in which this energy is divided between neutrino and beta particle. So, for that one needs to develop a theory and uh, once again in the early days of quantum mechanics, this was uh, a wonderful a success very successful theory could be developed based on quantum mechanics which could almost reproduce this type of shape. Okay. So, that theory known as a Fermi theory derived sometimes 1934 or so that I will try to describe some uh, steps some features of that, but that also needs uh, some uh, quantum mechanical equations quantum mechanical formula and here the mechanism is very different from what it was in alpha decay. In alpha decay the central point was that barrier coulomb barrier and tunneling through that barrier that was deciding the main features. Here uh, for electron uh, beta minus decay there is no coulomb barrier because beta minus is a negatively charged particle and the nucleus will anyway attract it. For uh, beta plus decay the it will it will uh, repel the nucleus will repel and you will have some kind of coulomb repulsion, but there also the barrier is uh, is not the main feature the barrier crossing is very easy that probability is almost 1. So, here the features are are very different and there is no nuclear uh, interactions electron or positron. These are so called leptons and do not take part in nuclear interactions nuclear forces strong forces. So, here the situation is very different and the theory is also very different and that is in terms of what we call time dependent perturbation theory in quantum mechanics. What is that time dependent perturbation theory in quantum mechanics? The main result is that if you have a system and uh, the initial wave function is psi i and it makes a transition to this state where the wave function is psi f, then the probability of this transition is given by this transition rate equation lambda 2 pi 
over h cross and then this is uh, um, h i f square and d n by d e f. So, this is known as Fermi golden rule. This is the main equation of this time dependent perturbation theory. Now, what is this H? H is that interaction Hamiltonian. This transition is taking place because of certain Hamiltonian, because of certain interaction. So, that uh, is uh, here and H i f means psi f h psi i and this, this these brackets uh, for space dependent parts it is just an integration of this psi f complex conjugate and then this h and this psi i over the volume of interest ditto. So, that is this h i f d n d f is a something which I will talk more and this decides in fact, the uh, shape of this uh, energy distribution known as density of states at final energy E f. Okay, so, uh, first let me settle this uh, this part what should be this Hamiltonian now this is uh, somewhat involved because uh, you know this beta decay processes are because of the in weak interactions and at a fundamental level if you think it is a conversion of one quark into another quark neutron you know it is d d u and proton you know it is u u d up quark and down quark down quark has a charge of minus 1 by 3 up quark has a charge of plus 2 by 3 so when the conversion takes place at that level if you talk from neutron to proton for example then this d is to be converted into u and plus what you call exchange particle w minus and then this w minus decays into this electron and neutrino. So, all these kinds of uh, processes go on. So, writing Hamiltonian for that is uh, an involved thing, but then uh, this interaction is indeed a very, very short range. This w boson which mediates this weak interaction that is uh, some 80 giga electron volt rest mass energy also. So, interaction range is in few tens of picometers. So, one can take that as a point interaction. In that case, one can write uh, uh, we will just keep it here and uh, uh, we will just uh, take this integration and assuming that it is a kind of point and interaction this Hamilton can be written there this psi f and psi i look at this final state final wave function and initial wave function. So, here you have this parent nucleus. So, this uh, psi i is the wave function of parent nucleus whereas, psi f you have three particles one is daughter nucleus one is this beta particle uh, and one is this neutrino. So, if I write the uh, this uh, matrix element it is integration of psi f star psi f star will be psi d star and psi e star and psi nu star and then that h and this side it is only parent ditto. So, these are nuclear wave function psi p and psi d are nuclear wave function and psi e and psi nu are electron and neutrino wave functions 
which you can treat to some extent as uh, free particles. They are not exactly free particles as a neutrino is uh, more closely free particle, but for pro positron or electron it interacts with this daughter nucleus uh, through Coulomb interaction that is that will have its own correction term, but no nuclear interaction or uh, that. So, first approximation at least treat that as a free particle. So, the psi e written as some volume nuclear volume you can take e power i p e momentum dot r over h cross free particle wave function similarly nu 1 over square root of that volume e power i p nu dot r over h cross. Now, this quantity p e dot r over h cross or p nu dot r over h cross turns out to be small. We can make an estimate of it. For example, here p e linear momentum of electron uh, the, the which comes out of this decay. If I take that kinetic energy of the beta particle say 1 MeV, what should be its p? Cannot use half mv square is equal to k because the rest mass of energy of electron is 5 11 kilo electron volt, something like 0.5 mv. And kinetic energy 1 AV me, mev means double of the rest mass energy. So, one has to use relativistic expressions, and for this, the relativistic expression is kinetic energy. If you want to write, kinetic energy will be total energy which is p square c square plus m naught square c 4 and uh, this is the square root of this, this is the total energy e square is p square c square plus m naught square c 4, this is the total energy and minus the rest mass energy, this is kinetic energy. This is a relativistic expression of kinetic energy. Simple if you remember that uh, basic equation E square is equal to P square C square plus M naught square C 4. If you remember this basic expression, then this is the total energy and from the total energy we subtract the rest mass energy and the extra is kinetic energy. So, if I use uh, numbers kinetic energy is 1 MeV here. So, this is 1 MeV and then this is take it this side plus m naught c square is 0.5 MeV. So, it is this 1.5 MeV and square this whole thing is equal to P e square c square plus m naught square c 4 is 0.5 square that is 0 0.25 MeV square. right so this is 1.5 whole square is 2.25 so where do i do the calculations okay let me do it here so 1.5 square is 2.25 mev square keep track of the units also is equal to and uh, what is this ah, 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 ah. 0 0.5 MeV square right 0 0.5 MeV uh, M naught C square whole square yes 0 0.5 MeV. So, that is 5 this is equal to P square C square and plus 0 0.25 MeV square. So, P E square C square is like 2 MeV square. P e c is like square root of 2 m e v. So, p is say 1.4 m e v by c. So, if I look at this term p e dot r by h cross p e dot r by h cross 
and everything is uh, happening inside the nuclear volume. So, r you can take something like a nuclear radius which will be few femtometers. So, p e is uh, 1.4 mev by c and r is uh, say few femtometers. So, it is a femtometer and h cross. and h cross c this is about 200 mev fm. So, you can see it is a very small number 1.4 divided by 200. So, 7 into 10 power minus 3 dimensionless of course, unit less. So, this is a small number and therefore, this exponential term can be expanded and if you expand that you can write this as 1 over root v and then 1 plus p dot r over h cross and so on. Similarly, you can expand this uh, psi nu and psi nu will be similarly you can write this as 1 over square root of v and then 1 plus i p dot r over h cross and higher terms. And it turns out that uh, it is a it is not a bad approximation if you just keep this one and neglect everything else here as well as here. So, it will be just reduced to 1 by square root of this volume and 1 by square root of this volume. So, if we do this what happens in this expression which this is the expression for this uh, h i f this expression. So, this is daughter nucleus. So, this is nuclear wave function, this is parent nuclear wave function. These two is just 1 by root v here and 1 by root v here. So, this will be 1 by volume coming out. So, now I can erase this and it is 1 by volume coming out. This v is for volume and it is psi d star h psi p d tau. This is uh, now only nuclear wave functions and this interaction which is a very very short range interaction this you can write as m i f square m m i f and this is nu it is known as nuclear matrix element. can make the assumption that uh, this momentum dependence of lambda or energy dependence of lambda will not come from here. This is all in all that nuclear wave functions not electronic wave functions are not coming here. So, this uh, electron momentum or electron kinetic energy distribution will not get affected by this. So, it is just a nuclear matrix element which is here 1 by v coming from here. So, this uh, is only giving me 1 by v square. Okay. This is just giving me 1 by v square and this is a constant factor. So, ultimately it comes out to this d n d f. So, let, let me talk on this uh, d n d f. What is d n d f? It is density of states at final energy e f. So, what does that mean? So, Yes. So, this final state which is here to which you are looking for that transition from initial to state to final state. So, there is some energy E f for this final state, but then the available energies around that this is a system. In this system the it will occupy some energy level, but then there are other energy levels which are available and it is occupying this one. So, how much is the density that means, in a in a, an interval of say d e around that uh, e f how many quantum states are there. So, that is d n. So, d n by d f. So, if I am treating this electron and neutrino as a, uh, a free particle in that volume nuclear volume. 
So, it is confined in that nuclear volume and for a particle confined in a, a volume V, one can uh, write the density of states uh, easily. If you remember uh, your quantum mechanics relation in one dimensional deep square well potential, the energies are given as n square h cross square y square 2 m l square n equal to 1, 2 and so on. In terms of p, you can write this each quantum state is characterized by this uh, value n and this is uh, uh, n h cross and then how much p h cross k in fact uh, pi over l. Right. So, this is p n and energy is in terms of that each n corresponds to one quantum state. So, pi by you can write this as uh, n times h cross by l by pi. So, equal intervals of this quantity n going 1, 2, 3, 4 you are getting this quantum states. If you go in three dimension a similar thing will appear. So, in three dimensional box also if you have a three dimensional box with uh, uh, length l there also the quantum states will be given by E equal to n 1 square plus n 2 square plus n 3 square each one for each dimensions h cross square pi square 2 m l square similar. And in terms of uh, p it will be characterized by these three numbers and here once again in, in three numbers you will have similar expressions and each quantum state will correspond to one set of these integers n 1, n 2, n 3. So, any one of these going by one unit will give you one more quantum state. So, how to count? First you have some energy E and corresponding to that energy you have some P and then uh, you have to count that around that E if you construct E to E plus d E, e this is the range E to E plus d E in that range number of quantum states that you have to count number of quantum states. Okay. So, we will uh, take from here and we will tell how to make this calculation this this counting and once I get this d n number of energy states then we will be able to calculate this d n by d f and from there we will be able to find the distribution as predicted by this theory the energy distribution of beta particles stop here. Mm -hmm.